Hey guys, I'm Ben. Thanks for coming out, Eric, and I wanted to show you my 81 Trans Am. These cars obviously were made iconic by the Smokey and the Bandit uh, movie. And yeah, it's 81. The iconic uh, early Trans Ams, uh, of course, from that movie had a little different grille, fiberglass style uh, bumper that uh, it's actually a foot. There's actually a foot of room. That nose really sticks out, uh, protrudes outward to uh, give it kind of that just i mean it's all nose it's really weird of course the bird you know when they first uh, put the bird on these uh i believe it was iacocca that had the idea to do that and thought it would be really neat and the gm ceo or the pontiac division said yeah that's the craziest thing i've ever heard of and it ended up really catching on this one of course has the shaker hood and all the fun stuff and we'll come back around i'll show you under the hood and this is a driver this is a 47,000 mile uh, car and basically it was purchased in Gladewater, Texas. And the lady ordered it from the factory. It actually did not have a bird from the factory. That was kind of this weird anomaly about this car. It's got the TA 4.9 decals on it. And this car actually did not come with a 4.9. And it's a really good thing. They had the turbo Trans Ams that were, that was kind of the flagship for 81. But the only way that you could get a four speed in 81, which is the last year of the second generation Trans Am Camaro F body. The only way you get a four speed was with, with that trot line weight they call the 5.0 liter. 5.0 liter Chevy 305 is an absolute dog. You might as well get rid of it. And that's exactly what they did. It has a 355 roller engine. Let me just go ahead and pop the hood and I'll show you that. And again, it's, it's a driver, it's dirty. And there's some things that I would have actually done different had I built the car. And we are looking at uh, some different coilover and tubular A-arms from Pro Touring F-Body. But, of course, it's been converted to R134, different things like that. But you've got a roller engine, full roller cam. It's actually got Phytec fuel injection on it, which actually does really well. Uh, had to upgrade the alternator. The alternator was just not quite keeping up with the electric fans and all of that. So this car is basically unrestored. It still retains the factory catalyst stickers and the wiring diagrams and different things like that. So it's more of what I would call a resto mod and it certainly is a driver. It's, it's no show car, but uh, we are looking at uh, upgrading the suspension and some of those other things as I mentioned. Uh, it's been completely rebuilt, the suspension has, but the AFR heads, that was a really good upgrade. And a lot of people are, why didn't you LS swap it? Well, I didn't build the car first off. And, you know, the LS swap's a great engine, but the, this kind of retains the factory authenticity of having that Chevy engine, that, that uh, you know, third generation, excuse me, the second generation Chevy engine with the, you know, the headers and the AFR heads and the wind intake and some of these other things that kind of retains that, that originality and it's mated to that Borg Warner uh, transmission, uh, four speed. And of course it's got some fun factory or, or period correct mods like the Hurst shifter and the eight ball uh, shifter and all that kind of stuff, the knob. So anyway, it's just kind of a survivor, kind of a presentable uh, all original car for the most part. So as we walk around, We've actually got some 17 inch year one upgraded uh, honeycomb wheels and they do follow the factory specs of, of those wheels, kind of that same look, but it does fill in the wheel well just a little bit better and uh, carry it on. The, uh, this is the version two decal kit. I did this decal kit just because it, uh, the guy that had it before me had removed all of the decals and it just didn't look right. You know, the Trans Am's got to have the bird on it. We went with the uh, TA 4.9, but I've actually got a 5.0 liter, which is what the car had in it, but it's not a 5.0 liter. So I'd like to really do something a little more custom with that and just haven't figured out which direction to go with that yet. I uh, did the honeycomb inserts and this side was really a beast to get that out without pulling the fender. But what that does is, you know, it, it just had these really ugly looking factory grills and that's a pretty popular mod. I'm not the first one to come up with that. And I did uh, open up the uh, shaker also and put the honeycomb there. There's actually a false grill that uh, there's no actual air intake or anything like that. It's just totally for looks only, cosmetic purposes only. And that's what was really weird about these cars is they looked fast sitting still, but they were really kind of dogs from the factory. So this is really 
been upgraded to the point where it can perform as well as it looks and it's nothing crazy i've owned multiple cars that were in excess of a thousand horse but this does just fine you're not going to get in a whole lot of trouble with it which is kind of what I, I need to start thinking about uh, it is a factory four-wheel disc car which is a ws6 package they didn't call it the ws6 package in 81 they had kind of phased that out but it is it retains all the same sway bars and of course the positive track rear end four-wheel disc brakes and the suspension. The car has been lowered a little bit just to give it a little more aggressive stance and better handling, and it does well. I am gonna put a little wider tire on it. I'm gonna see if they offer this wheel. I don't think that they do, to my knowledge, offer this wheel and a, a little wider wheel, but we're gonna to try to do what we can to just space that wheel out just a little bit more. Uh, there's a couple of these running around in uh, the DFW Metroplex that are really nice. Jesse's performance, he has one, and man, it's just awesome. Twin turbo LS, and of course, this is nothing like that, but the interior is original. And so, you know, what you, what you see is what you get, you know, 47,000 miles. It's certainly not perfect, but the factory GM floor mats and all of that's still there. At some point, it's been upgraded. The Kenwood stereo has been upgraded, and uh, I helped her out with uh, putting a little subwoofer in the rear, so it, you can hear it over those nice throaty exhaust notes while you're driving down the highway. It had a little higher gear ratio from the factory, which was good. This was actually the California Special, what they called, I can't remember what the coating was on the four-speed cars, but they had a little higher gear ratio, so it actually cruises with a four-speed pretty nice down the highway. I've kind of gone back and forth on putting the T56 six-speed in it just to have that extra gear to grab, but you know, it, it does just fine. Uh, yeah, your gas cap, of course, is uh, behind the door, and that's the filler, and of course, it's dirty and mostly original. Uh, there's actually really no rust on this car. It's, it's really kind of anomalous when it comes to a lot of these just, you know, they started rusting from the factory, but the floor pans and everything underneath, is, it's just really, really kind of an honest car as far as all that's concerned. Uh, yeah, and around this, this side, pretty much the same. You've got the uh, rubberized polyurethane bumpers and so on and so forth. That needs to be aligned a little better. I've actually tried to align that, but every single one of these that I've seen, even the show cars, they just have a really hard time aligning those. And yeah, so it's got the factory clock and basically all the gauges are factory. And of course the polished aluminum is kind of an interesting thing that they did. start but so we did some mild upgrades just just cosmetic things also after I got the car and one was the uh, turn signals integrated in the headlights as well as the parking lights driving lights and LED headlights of course and you know, it actually kind of adds to the overall appearance of the car. It kind of brings it into the 21st century. So, yeah, so don't really know uh, anything else I can tell you about it. I didn't build the car, and uh, there were some, certainly some things I would have done different. But as far as just an overall survivor, uh, it, it's just kind of an honest car. That, you know, I've had lots of different cars. I've, you know, just wanted, I've always been a car guy, and I've never had a car that you drive through town and people just stop what they're doing. It's just the craziest thing because it's so iconic and uh, it, it's so recognizable uh, upon the first you know, line of sight that uh, anybody has. Yeah, so the T-tops, this is obviously not a T-top car. The T-top cars are a little more desirable because of the, the movie and all of that, the Smokey and the Bandit series, but they do leak. And I honestly, personally, like the lines, the body lines without the T-top. It just has a little nicer line, especially the windows down. You always cruise with windows down, uh, unless it's crazy hot. And of course, it does have nice cold air conditioning, what's, uh, which really helps the comfortability factor. But yeah, they're, uh, they're really interesting cars. And you know, as far as it doesn't really take a whole lot of uh, mods, a lot of upgrades to make them very, very formidable track cars. So. Uh, hopefully that, we're, you know, in the next few years, if I hang on to this thing and I've kind of got this thing, I get bored with things and move on to something else. But this is actually something that I, I had a 76 and I've also had a 79 that was a red car, but I've always wanted a black one. 
And so when I found this, uh, it was just one of those things that, man, I got I to gotta figure out a way to make a deal on that. So I, uh, I see it sticking around for a while longer, and we would like to continue to, to do some things just to uh, continue to bring it into the 21st century without harming that factory, you know, the originality uh, aspect of the car. So it, with every car, that's what you really want to do is try to maintain the originality or if you know total frame off and you're going all all the way then you ls swap it and do all this other fun stuff and that's great but for this car it's just finding the right massaging moves to do to uh, help it maintain its uh, originality but also be drivable and actually be able to have some fun with so thanks for watching hope you guys enjoy the video